once upon a time in a beautiful land abundant with rivers fruit giving trees birds rain and a rich soil there stood a magnificent castle it was summer time and the kingdom was a buzz with the yearly summer festival all the people of the neighboring villages came to the festival there was dancing and singing music and colors all around the castle The king had watched over his people wisely for many years. He rode through the summer festival while his people bowed to him. He felt that something in the air was changing, but he did not know what it was. Something troubled his heart. He noticed something very strange. There was no sound of laughter and not one smile. on the faces of the people they passed by each other with a little nod or a bow but there was not one smile the king then spoke i welcome you all and thank you for gracing this occasion we have friends who have come from far off lands to be with us this summer may you want for nothing and may our hearts be filled but now where is the band let there be music through this day and may our hearts rejoice let us have our traditional summer dance but the only music that the musicians could play that day was slow somber and sad
Towards the rocks our footsteps turn to tap from morn to night. Long green snakes in the grass are we, our tails are far away. We wriggle and wriggle and twist. and plucking at his beard. He thought, Maybe the time has come. The king had served his people for a long time and he knew them well. He was worried that something was troubling everyone but did not know what it could be. He sat in his chambers thinking. Come sire, walk with me a while. I always like the summer breeze. It's nice to feel you, my old friend. So the king and the wind began to walk about the castle, watching the people at work. You are right, sire. There's not one smile, not one smile upon anyone's lips. Look! The king is here! Nasty wind, shut that window. Why do you frown at the summer breeze? <coughs> you see, not one laugh. They have lost their sense of humor. The wind took the king out into the orchard. The king is here! Even outside, as the summer sun shines bright, there's no song upon their lips, just the task of getting the fruit off the tree. And the king walked over to the kitchen. Bring me the potato. Those are not done. Boil them some more. Water. Where is my water? You fools. Haven't you learned to walk yet? Tripping over your own feet, bring me some water. Joy is lost, sire. You must do something. Look, even you can't smile. And the king did everything he could. He even pulled at his cheeks. 
but he could not smile he looked down forlorn and sad the king always took counsel from his friend the wind and now he had seen before his eyes joy was missing from his kingdom he realized that even he couldn't smile so the king called his wise ministers from the four wings of the castle north south east and west he spoke about what was troubling him and they conferred for a long while they thought and thought and thought some ministers had new ideas and some said this will not work and round and round and round the problem they went trying to see which was the best way to work at it Sometimes they got excited. Sometimes they got tired. But at last, the wisest minister from the east wing of the castle said, "Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Don't you see it's all pretty clear?" Clear? Yes. Remember the time when our king had his queen by his side? Yes. That was a time of joy, music and laughter. But after she died, it all went away. So we must bring it back. How? How? The fair maiden and the dragon. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. What is the story of the fair maiden and the dragon? I want to know. Once upon a time, there lived a beautiful fair maiden of the sunlight. She lived in a neighboring village, but was known throughout the lands for her song, beauty, and mirth that she held so naturally. Her hair was golden like the rays of the sun. And when she walked upon the ground all around her the air smelt of the sweet fragrance of fresh roses she was kind and upon her lips was always a song everyone loved her when our queen died darkness and gloom spread across the land Legend has it that she is held captive by a ferocious dragon. <laughs> If we free her, we can bring her back to our castle again. Our castle needs a queen to return. A queen. Yes. Then I shall ask my sons. My first boy is so clever. My second one is really strong. Surely one of them can rescue her and bring her back to this land. But Zaya, what about your third son? Hmm. He is a dreamer. And well, 
all he does is dream. He cannot take on so important a quest. But my king, whoever returns with the maiden must take your place as king. You will have to step down. I will. The time has come. The king took the advice of his wise ministers. If one of his sons could free the fair maiden and slay the dragon, he could return to the kingdom and take his place as king. Joy would return to the kingdom with the coming of the fair maiden. The land would have a queen again. Word of this quest spread through the kingdom like wildfire and everyone was talking about it. Prince Lucius was the first son of the king. He was handsome and witty. He was waited upon by many and loved to tell stories of his glory. The people looked up to him for he was very charming and had a way with words. Hanging upon his neck was a golden star that had been given to him by his mother, the late Queen Sophia. She hoped that the light of the star would always guide his thoughts so that he could serve what was true. His servants fussed about him as they prepared him to go and meet his father. shines in glory. Of course, I will slay that dragon. I wait and my heart swells with pride as my father chooses me for this quest. When I return, I will re not return as a mere prince, but I shall be the king of this land. Tells of stories in which he shines in glory. You, my son, are gifted with intelligence. I bless you. May the summer sun guide your footsteps, and may the good spirits be with you on your journey. May your mother's star guide you. Go and bring back the fair maiden of the golden sun and take your place as king. I will, my father, my king. Prince Lucius, the first son of the king, is blessed by his father and sets off on the quest for the fair maiden of the golden sunlight. He is confident that he can win her and bring her back. Prince Lucius began his journey. He was clever and used his intelligence to get whatever he desired. He could always find the quickest solution to any problem. He stopped by nightfall to rest and travelled by day. This is the picture of the map and this is the kingdom. Here is the castle and here is the cave of shadows. To reach the cave of shadows where the dragon held the fair maiden captive, Prince Lucius had to cross the forest of darkness. The forest of darkness was the thickest forest in the land and had many untold mysteries. No one ever ventured into the forest. One of the tales that was told through the lands was that there lived in the forest an old lady. Some called her a witch 
and some called her a wise woman. As Prince Lucius walked into the forest of darkness towards the end of summer one day, he was drawn to a song. He followed the sound until he reached an old lady. She stood behind a cauldron, stirring and singing. Welcome, Prince Lucius, all shining in white. I have been waiting for you. You know my name? Well, of course you know my name. I am Lucius. I am famous. Everybody knows my name. Yes, I know of many things. And I know that you are on a journey to seek the fair maiden of the golden sunlight. <coughs> but may I offer you some advice, young prince, of great intelligence? I've heard of your existence, old lady, but I don't think that any kind of advice can help me on this journey more than my star. Well, I just have one thing to tell you. Look around you. It's summertime. Oh, Prince, you have cleverly chosen the shortest route to the Cave of Shadows. But this is a path of illusion. Be careful, for you will be tempted. The truth lies in the leaves. The leaves will lead you to the fair maiden. Do not go astray. <laughs> you old lady, you are sending me through the winding ways of the forest when I have already found a straight, clean road to the Cave of Shadows. It is the shortest route, the quickest route, and the best way to reach the cave. I have my golden star, and I don't need any golden leaves of trickery. Go now, old witch, be on your way. Old witch, where are you? Just then, a golden-haired maiden appeared behind the prince and covered his eyes. She turned him and led him towards a shimmering golden road. Ah, Prince Lucius, what does the old lady witch tell you? Of nothing important. Who are you? If you are going towards the dragon to find the fair maiden of the golden sunlight, you might want to follow her. Fair maiden, how did you appear? You look so radiant, as if you are made from the finest threads of sunshine. <laughs> She is quite a wonder, isn't she? Follow her. And the prince began to walk upon the shimmering road, blinded by the golden-haired maiden. But as he walked, he realized it was no road. It was a path of trickery and illusion. He suddenly found himself shouting for help. Help! Help me, fair maiden, help me! He was surrounded by water. Soon Prince Lucius was drowned. Prince Lucius sets off and meets the old lady in the forest. She asks him to find the truth and look to the leaves for help. But Prince Lucius is led astray. Tempted by illusion, he follows a maiden. But she isn't the real fair maiden. She isn't the maiden of the golden 
sunlight. She leads him onto a false shimmering road on which he meets his end. The summer days changed into autumn as the golden leaves fell slowly whilst they changed their hues. There stood more brooding in the kingdom when for the whole summer Prince Lucius did not return. Prince Arnold was the second son of the king. He stood in his chamber sharpening his sword. Upon his neck he wore a little silver sword which he hung upon a chain. This was given to him by his mother, Queen Sophia. She hoped that he always had the strength to choose what was courageous in a time of darkness. Prince Arnold knew he would be called by his father to go on the quest, as his brother had failed. Prince Arnold, your father is coming to meet you. Let him come. I know why he comes and I will see him. Oh, Arnold, you are the strongest man that lives in our kingdom. <coughs> My legs do not hold me up anymore. My strength fails me. Will you go on this quest and win the hand of the fair maiden and bring her back? You shall have my place as king. <coughs> I will not fail you, my father, my king. Go then, my son. The blessings of the autumn winds are upon you. May your path be clear from confusion as the earth changes her colors and prepares for the coming of winter. Do not worry, father. I have my sword. That's all I need. I will return with a fair maiden.
As the king begins to lose his strength, Prince Arnold, his second son, prepares to go out on the quest for the fair maiden. He is confident that with the might of his sword, he will be able to rescue her and slay the dragon. Look upon this map. You see the journey of Prince Lucius. That journey did not end well. Prince Arnold knew this, so he decided to take another route to the Cave of Shadows. But here, there, trees grew thick and strong. It was quite impossible to get through. Prince Arnold began his journey. Along with his sword, he decided to take an axe. Wherever Prince Arnold walked, everyone cleared out of his way as he was mighty and could do anything he set his mind on. But now before him stood the thickest of trees. Even as the leaves fell fast and the days grew shorter, Prince Arnold did not rest. He worked day and night, hacking and hewing down the thickest and strongest of trees that stood in his way. Suddenly, he heard a song and found an old lady stirring a big cauldron and singing. This was the same old lady that his brother had seen. Who are you? And what are you doing in this forest? Prince Arnold, welcome. How do you know my name? Speak, you old hag. Who are you? I am the keeper of the earth's secrets and a friend of this forest. You seek the golden-haired maiden just as your brother did. You know about her? I do, I do. I offer now my advice to you. Speak fast. I don't have all day to waste listening to your preaching. <coughs> you have walked, hacking and hewing the forest making a path for yourself. You have destroyed the forest and the trees grow angry. As you walk further into the forest, the trees will begin to whisper. The days grow colder and shorter. Do not go alone, young prince. Hold the warm hand of a friend and walk through the whispers. <laughs> what a tale you spin, old lady. Prince Arnold, hear my words. If you cannot face your fears, you will harden and freeze. Remember, all the leaves are falling and you must find the last leaf that falls from the trees. Catch it warm before it touches the cold earth. The leaf is the key to help you overpower the dragon. You tell me to find a little leaf and you say it will slay the dragon? <laughs> I have my sword. I don't need any more when I have my sword and my strength. I will soon return with the fair maiden by my side and then we shall see. All around Prince Arnold, the trees began to whisper. The day grew into night. Ah, Prince Arnold, you really think your sword and shield will protect you? Can your sword cut through the dark night? Come, Prince Arnold. This journey will be a test of your courage, 
for no living man is without fears. I am without fear. I am the most powerful man in this land. You cannot scare me. <laughs> Who are you? Where are you? Reveal yourself and I will cut you down. Prince Arnold was filled with fear. He was too scared to walk into the dark forest and inside him his heart hardened. Wall upon wall he built and he thought his heart grew fearless. Wall upon wall he built hardening deep inside coldness crept through the dark i am powerful and fearless at heart he shouted and brandished his sword pretending to be mighty and bold what's this i find myself in a castle can come close enough to see me and share a dance with me. May I have this dance? Dancing bears, painted wings, things I almost remember. Arnold suddenly stopped dancing. Something was happening to him. His legs could not move. His hands were frozen. He tried with all his strength to move, but he could not. All of a sudden, it began to snow. Prince Arnold forgot the golden-haired maiden and his quest. Slowly, he turned into a block of ice. The second son of the king ventures on the quest to find the fair maiden. He scorns what the old lady says about finding the last leaf. Instead, he follows a path on which he pretends to be brave. Fear and pretense turn his heart cold. He finds himself in an ice castle with an ice queen in it. Thinking he could make do with any queen, and not wanting to venture further into the forest where his fears manifest, he decides to take the queen back to his kingdom. Claiming he is the most powerful, he begins to dance with her. But the magic of the forest turns him into a block of ice.
autumn turned slowly into winter and the kingdom was covered in a blanket of snow enjoying a sleigh ride He was the youngest of the king's three sons and spent most of his time outdoors exploring the secrets of nature Wherever he went a little bird flew with him and was his loyal friend The people in the kingdom felt that prince david could understand and speak the language of animals and plants around him he spent most of his time playing his banjo singing and dreaming he was everyone's friend and loved all through the land for he was still considered carefree curious and innocent as a child but he had never shouldered responsibility however he was the only man in the kingdom who could still smile upon his neck hung a locket a gift of love from his mother queen sophia prince david your father his highness calls you to his chambers oh lorry merry christmas i'm coming Tell my father I'm coming just as soon as these reindeer stop pulling me Prince David is the third son of the king He is out enjoying the winter snow As his brothers have failed on the quest Prince David is called by his father the king Son, where have you been? Sorry, father. I was out in the snow. David, I grow sick with the passing of every season. Your brothers before you went on the quest and failed. I have no hope left. But father, what about me? I can, David. You do not even realize that you are a prince. <coughs> You cannot even see that more and more people are falling sick. I would never ask this of you, for I know that you cannot even. I will do my best, father. Go then. Waste not more time. The king is sick and bedridden. More people in the kingdom are falling sick. The king calls for his third son David. He has no hope left. David is sad that his father does not believe in him but promises to do his best. Once again we look upon this map Here we see the journeys of the first two brothers. Prince David decided to follow a third route through the forest. This was longer 
and he would have to cross a lake that now stood frozen. He decided that it would perhaps be the best route, seeing that the other two routes had not worked. The winter snow fell fast. Prince David walked into the forest, listening for the sounds of nature, looking at the trees that stood. He walked with his bird Kiki flying close to him, guiding him at every step to walk further into the darkness and not dream the day away. A song began to fill his ears and he looked for the owner of the voice. He found the old lady standing behind her cauldron, stirring something in it. Ah, David, you must be the youngest prince. I am. And who might you be? I am an old lady who keeps the secrets of Mother Earth. You seek the golden-haired fair maiden of the sunshine, don't you? I do. <coughs> now the snow falls fast. You have done well to choose this path. Come, sit down. Play something for me. Your path ahead will not be easy. But now, you must go through the bushes of thorns. The thorns strike deep. You must keep going. Remember, little David, there's kindness that lives in your heart. You must always do good, no matter the circumstance. Thank you for your words. I will remember. It's just that I... You doubt yourself as your father doubts you. And there is just one more thing that you must not forget. What's that? All the leaves have fallen. It is late upon the hour. Yet you must still look for the one leaf, the last leaf of Lorian. Find it and keep it safe. It is the only way to save yourself from the dragon. A leaf? Yes. There will come a time when you meet death. Then you must rub the leaf upon your heart. Kiki, no, Kiki, please. You're the only one who believes in me, Kiki. Her strength fails her. When joy is lost, young David, no life can move. The winter hits everyone hard this time. Like a sword of death, it pierces through. What shall I do? I cannot go alone. You must hurry. Lose not your courage. I will take care of her. trusted friends we know each other in my nine or ten together we climb hills and trees Love
Land of Land of ABC Skin the heart, skin the need We have joy, we have fun We have seasons in the sun But the hills that we climbed Wasn't season out of time We have joy, we have fun We have seasons in the sun But the hills that we climbed season out of time Prince David begins his journey and meets the old lady He listens to all she has to say He must take the path through the bushes of thorns and she tells him to remember to always be good and kind She also tells him that he is to find the last leaf of laurel which will help him when he meets the dragon sad that he has lost his friend kiki he continues his journey alone here goes prince david he must cross the bushes of thorns to reach the cave of shadows Prince David continued through the snowy forest of darkness looking carefully for a leaf. Ouch! This must be the bush of thorns. Kiki, what shall I do? But he realized there was no Kiki to guide him any more. I have to walk in. Little David, this must seem very different from your sleigh ride, mustn't it? You are the last son of the king, a dreamer. And how do you intend to save the kingdom with your song? With each poke, he painfully woke up to something new. Have you ever shouldered responsibility before, David? To love and dream and sing is not enough to be a king. You have to act like a king. Can your deeds serve your people? Can a dreamer slay the dragon and step into the shoes of a king? No! Remember little David, kindness lives in your heart. finally pushed his way through and fell to the ground he was cut and bruised all over everything turned dark around him prince david finds the bushes of thorns While he slowly crosses through he gets poked scratched and cut but while this happens he wakes up to many things that he has pushed aside many things that are essential for him wounded and hurt he falls to the ground <laughs> Through the darkness that engulfed David voices filled the air When he awoke he found himself in the elven forest of Lorien There were lights all around him The elves had built their houses in the trees By his side heel by the old lady flapping her wings was Kiki once more
you look upon this map you will see that prince david crossed through the forest of darkness through the bushes of thorns and was now in lorien lorien was a forest of the elves though it was winter this part of the land was rich and green as if secluded from the rest of the kingdom this little forest was rich with healing powers david's journey forward would mean entering the cave of shadows as prince david was very weak the elves carried him and took him to a safe place where he could be comfortable and rest for two days and two nights he rested being waited upon by the elves on the third day the elven queen galadriel came to meet him greetings prince david son of king alfred and queen sophia greetings o queen of the fair elves i come in peace you have done well in your journey so far but you have not found the last leaf of lorien without that all hope will be lost word has come that like your father all the elders of the land are bedridden my father my people they still live david but time runs against them very soon the children will begin to fall sick no not the children listen to me carefully david the leaf is essential to fight the dragon you must find it but i have not found it i do not know where to look i only saw thorns there was no leaf that i could see you have one last chance david i will bring you the mirror of lorien look into it this might help you do not be afraid david this water is a mirror look into it and tell me what you see i see nothing just my reflection and as prince david bent forward the locket from his chain that he wore on his neck dangled above the water he looked carefully at his mother's blessings to him my mother's locket it's a leaf and it's glowing david remembered the pain he encountered in the bushes of thorns you are a dreamer will your song save the people you have to act like a king can i be a king no it's me i am the last leaf of lorien yes david you are right it is you me how can i save my people your mother filled into this locket all of her joy and goodness that warms and moves the life within us and now you fill this with your own life and your own light it lives inside you and grows each day as your own joy and goodness you are the last leaf it is you alone who can destroy the dragon take this sword and remember to strike at the heart of the dragon strike i have never hurt an animal let alone kill one there comes a time david when we must do the unthinkable the fate of your people lies in your hands 
I have faith in yourself, David. Come now and rest one more night. The season now begins to turn. Spring is coming. Tomorrow morning, you must set off before the morning sun rises. behind the world ahead and there are many parts to tread through shadow to the edge of night until the stars are all and twilight loud and chill all shall fade all shall forest of Lorien, Prince David realizes that he is the last leaf. His own resilient life, joy and goodness will be the key to freeing the fair maiden from the clutches of the dragon. He is unsure about what he has to do and is afraid to face the dragon. He rests one last night. The cave of shadows was quite dark, even though the sun had risen. Fire and smoke burst through the mountains and caves unexpectedly. It must be the dragon. David sat down with Kiki by his side, remembering his mother's song.
when you meet a point of death rub the leaf upon your heart David suddenly found himself blinded and surrounded by a mist. Maiden, you are the dragon? I was cursed long ago by the witches of darkness. I have been waiting for you. Only one who is willing to meet his own darkness and remain true could have broken the spell. You, O oh prince, have saved me. Fair maiden of the golden sunlight, will you return with me to my kingdom and be my queen? I will. The fair maiden of the golden sunlight has been cursed long ago and transformed into a dragon. But Prince David breaks the spell using the goodness from his leaf and the dragon transforms back into the fair maiden. Prince David asks her to return with him to his kingdom. So began David's homeward journey. As he walked back, the cold, hard winter turned into spring. Life started to bloom all around. people prepared for the arrival of David and his fair maiden.
David, I never imagined that you would be the one to bring back this beautiful fair maiden. I never believed in you. Forgive me, my son. No, father, I hardly believed in myself, but my journey taught me that I should. Sire. This is my friend, the wind. He accompanies me through every season. Sire, look! You can smile again! Ah, I feel young again. David, you have helped us. You have brought joy and life back to our land. It was in the spring that Prince David married his fair maiden. Crowned little David King. The old lady from the forest came with her pot of new spells, and Galadriel, Queen of the Elves, came to bless everyone. Joy returned to the kingdom. And then they lived happily ever after.
Oh, 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 oh,